Hi everyone, it's Olivia and welcome to this channel where we talk about Rizzo, zines, art, and all sorts of cool stuff. Now in this two-part video series, we're going to be talking all about booklets, specifically DIYing booklets. And yes, there's enough stuff to talk about that I am splitting this whole thing into a two-part video. Yes, I know it sounds crazy. So this is part one and we're going to be talking about the pros and cons as well as the considerations as to why you might want to DIY the finishing of your zines and booklets manually at home. And when I say finishing, what I mean is taking loose printed pages and doing the whole process of cutting, scoring, trimming, folding, and stapling these loose pages to turn them into a booklet. And part two of this video series goes into more of the crafting part of it. So the actual showing you how to put together the booklet using different kinds of tools depending on what's available to you. So if you're more interested in that video, then you can go ahead and skip this one. So the first reason why you might want to DIY the booklet finishing is because you want to order only a very small number of booklets. And that's because a booklet run or print job takes time to set up. And so there's usually a specific minimum number or quantity of booklets to order that will give you an attractive enough price break so that you can lower the cost of each individual booklet. So let's use Vistaprint as an example. So I'm not saying that you should be using Vistaprint to print your booklets, but I just wanted to show you how the numbers work in principle. So if we go to Vistaprint and we type booklet and we go to shop now, and let's do a half letter size booklet at budget glossy for 24 pages including a cover stock cover and as you can see it's automatically trying to recommend that you print 250 now if we just wanted to print one booklet it's going to cost $46 to do that now if we wanted to print 25 which is a pretty common quantity that I get asked about as you can see Vistaprint is going to charge you $235 which on a per booklet basis would be $9.40 per booklet. So as you can see, you've almost quartered the price from $1 at $46 per booklet to $9.40 per booklet if only you would print 25. Let's go to 50 quantity and there the price is at $430, which brings it even lower to $8.60 per booklet. And when you go to 100, the total price is $561 or $5.61 per booklet. And for the heck of it, let's just do quantity 2000. And there you can see that the price is $2,843, which brings the price per booklet down to $1.00. 42 cents. So that is a huge difference going from printing just one booklet at $46 all the way to printing 2,000 booklets at $2,843, which translates to $1.42. So from $46 to $1.42 per booklet is a huge difference if only you would print quantity 2,000. So let's say you really just need the one booklet. So let's take a look at how much it would cost if you just went and printed the sheets yourself somewhere else and then DIY the finishing of the booklet by yourself at home. So let's head on over to the local Staples copy and print website where they have the pricing for standard color copies. Let's do letter sized because folding that will get us to a half letter size. And from one to 499 copies, it's 41 cents. But because it has to be double sided, let's just do 82 cents or 41 times 2 for one sheet of double sided on a letter size sheet of paper so for a 24 page booklet you're going to need six double sided sheets of a letter sized paper and so six times 82 cents is four dollars and 92 cents so even if you printed one on a cover stock, it's probably not going to add that much to your cost. So let's round it all the way up to like maybe 6 or $7 per booklet. 
if you just got the pages printed out and you DIY'd the booklet finishing at home. But compared to Vistaprint, which would charge you like $46 for the one booklet, you still save $40. So if it were me, I would be like, yeah, I save $40. Yeah, just give me the printed pages and I'll just staple, fold, and trim it myself. So that amount of savings will be different depending on the quote that you get from the printer that you are working with. But, you know, it might be worth looking into to see what the price differential is. So reason number two for why you might want to DIY your booklet finishing is because of timing. So with the nature of risograph printing, you might want to print a larger quantity from the get-go because the price per print goes down as the quantity goes up. However, you might not need all 50 or 100 copies all at once. A lot of creators and zine makers tend to make a zine run that they want to debut for a particular zine fair or craft fair. However, if it's a particularly small one, then you might not expect to sell all 100 in one sitting. In that case, you might consider just finishing 30 zines for the earliest event, and then you can take your time to finish another batch for the next event, which might be several months away. So if time is on your side and you would rather conserve cash in exchange for the time and effort of finishing your zines yourself, then going the DIY route might be for you. So the third reason why you might want to DIY your booklet finishing is because you want to do some fancy extra things to give your zine that custom handmade vibe. And the good thing about zines is that there aren't any rules. So if you really enjoy crafting, then you could really be creative with how you finish your zines. For example, you might want to combine different kinds of printing. So if you want to combine laser with risograph printing, you can do that. You can use special papers. You can do tabs, inserts, cutouts, stickers. So DIYing your booklet finishing opens up a lot of additional options for you. And if you already own something like a cry cut or a silhouette that allows you to do custom cuts, then you can really go to town on that. And here are some examples of some zines that I own that are on the fancier side. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at some booklets with some DIY aspect or customization done to them. On the left side, I'm gonna keep here for comparison purposes a standard letter-sized booklet, which is eight and a half by 11, like that. And then on the right side, I'm gonna have a standard half letter size booklet, which is five and a half by eight and a half. First up is a collection of smaller than standard sized scenes. So if you go to a place like Vistaprint, they don't even offer these sizes as options. So first we have a zine called Untitled and I'm going to show all of the credit of all the contributors to the zine on the screen right now because there's quite a few artists involved in this project. But this zine is 4x6 so it's about a greeting card size so it's quite small. Even smaller than that is Keelan's comic called Crucible which is about 35 by 4 inches. Lastly, we have a zine by Wenting, which is about four and a half by six inches. And this is all in cover stock. So each sheet had to be scored prior to folding so that the cover stock paper won't crack as it's being folded. But it does give the zine a nice hefty feel to it. Uh, and this is really great for zines with a lower page count. But let's compare the sizes of the zine to the standard half letter. So as you can see, they are all way smaller than a standard half letter. Next up is this scene called The Death of Linda by Tess Anelli Reed, which I got at a fair. So the cover has this silver printing on it, which is really special, as well as a square orientation. And when I open it up, there's this insane origami folding, kind of accordion, thing going on here and I really want to reverse engineer it so maybe that's something that we can do in a future video but I feel like this is something that probably is hand done I I just think this is so insane that I don't know how you would get something like this done at a print shop you know 
So next up is a pair of zines by yours truly, also smaller than standard half letter sized. And you can tell that I really like DIYing certain aspects of these zines because for this one, you, there's a ring binder to it and then you can flip it in different ways. And then for this one, I created a sleeve for it and it's a standard one sheet zine. So I have videos showing how these were made and also shameless plug if you are interested in purchasing these zines to support this channel, there are still some up on the pin dot store. This one is a one sheet risograph scene that is also smaller than standard half letter size booklet and as you can see this one there's a cutout and this was done by a circle punch so that you can get a little bit of a glimpse into the rest of the zine which is very playful and has a combination of photography and shapes but this is what I'm talking about if you have a cry cut or a silhouette cutter you can make these cutouts even more elaborate when you're putting together your zine next up is a zine by Shannon and Claire and it looks so good with the two booklets in the back but the front has embossing on it and then the inside pages are smaller than the cover so that they're a little bit offset off of the edges so that looks just truly amazing and the inside pages are printed with just regular laser in black and white but the overall look of it is so stunning So last is a pair of standard half letter size booklets. So I'm going to place them against this half letter size booklet template just so you can see that they are that size. These are hand bound because as you can see there are cute ribbons on the binding. And then this one, Chilled Fruit by Chiffon, is printed on regular laser color printer. And there's a really cute holographic sticker on the edge of it. And then this one, Spring, Summer, Autumn, Winter by Maggie, uses this beautiful gray paper with fiber textures on it. And this one is just printed on a home ink jet printer. All right, so what would be the reasons to not DIY your booklet finishing? Well, it would not make sense if you don't have the time or if it's not worth your time so if money is not a concern and for example if you're printing a large quantity and you need to get it done really really fast then it's probably worth it just to have the printer do the booklet finishing for you you probably want to get your booklets finished professionally if you require a certain level of consistency and professionalism to the look of your booklet finishing not that you cannot achieve that by DIYing, but you'll probably have a higher rate of success if you just let a machine do it for you. And you'll have to check with your printer, but a lot of booklets come in these standard sizes like half letter and letter. But you know, in our studio, we've done sizes like 4x6, 5x5, 5x6, 8x5. And so that is something that you'll need to ask your printer if they can do for you and what the quote on that would be. And lastly, you probably don't want to DIY your booklet finishing if you don't like crafting and you hate DIY. Like rather than the process getting you excited, you are filled with anxiety and stress. And in that case, it might be worth it just to send the finishing out to be done professionally. That way you can skip all of the stress and anxiety and still end up with the result that you like. All right, so that is my spiel about DIYing your booklet finishing. In the next video, we're actually going to DIY the booklet finishing and do the thing. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please give it a like, subscribe, and leave a comment in the comment section below. And I will see you in that next video.